Sofia, Bulgaria. This is a city that you might not actually think about when you're thinking about where to travel next. And it's a city located in the Balkans in a country that may not be the most traveled country in the world. But this is a city full of history. It's a city full of churches, a city full of hustle and bustle, and a city full of very, very friendly locals that are happy to show you what is the beauty of Bulgaria and what is the beauty of Sofia. So without further ado, we've got 24 hours today in the capital city of Bulgaria, Sofia, and I'm gonna show you all that this country has to offer. It's supposed to be an exciting day, and this is actually one of our last days here in Bulgaria. This capital city is supposed to be one of the more interesting ones that you have on offer here in Europe. So let's go ahead and get our day started here in the capital of Sofia. Now, whenever I travel to a new city, there's always something that I like to do, which is to explore the local markets. And that's the best way to sort of get a feel of what a city is really like. And to get a feel of that, we are currently here at one of the oldest and one of the most traditional markets here in Sofia, Bulgaria. This right behind me, this long passageway that extends we're actually over a kilometer down there. This is the Women's Bazaar here in Sofia. And you might be wondering, why is it called the Women's Market? There are so many men here. But actually, I'm looking around right now. I do realize most of them are women. Um, but the reason behind it is because this place was actually constructed around the late 19th century, early 20th century as sort of this big market. It's been around for like, what, 100 plus years, 130, 150 years. This was a place that people would come to sell their fruits, their vegetables, all types of things. And today, it's sort of been modern it's sort of been cleaned up. You can tell there's no longer just a bunch of stalls, but you've got actual structures that have been built to sort of house all these stalls. Now, of course, the produce is still as fresh as it was hundreds and hundreds of years ago. You've got fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, and people are bargaining, they're coming here to buy things. The fruits are honestly incredible. And what I'm really realizing is that because we're getting so close to Turkey, there's a lot of Turkish influence inside this market. You can see like the types of spices that they're selling, the types of beans that they're selling. They're all very, very Turkish, and they're ingredients that would use you would use to make traditional Turkish dishes simply because Bulgaria at one point was part of the Ottoman Empire, but the market is hectic, the market is crazy, and there's just a lot of people here buying their fruits, doing their daily shopping. There are also the local, local eateries, a local coffee shop, so you can always get a coffee while you're walking around doing your morning shopping, but especially if you come like during this time in the morning when locals are coming here with their little carts and trolleys to buy things, it's gonna get hectic, it's gonna get busy, and it's the atmosphere that I love here in Sofia, Bulgaria. This is never a good sign. The building right behind me is the main central market hall of Sofia. And it's supposed to be massive, it's supposed to be beautiful. Unfortunately, it is completely closed for renovations. So unfortunately, this time around, I won't be able to see it. Hopefully, if you come to Sofia and you're at this place, it will be open, it will be renovated, and it will be beautiful. But we don't have to go in here because there's something interesting right across the street. You can see there's a big, big mosque behind me. That is the Bayer Bashi Mosque. Let's go see if we can go inside. Banya Bashi Mosque is an Ottoman style mosque that was built in the 16th century. So, I mean, we're currently in the 21st century. That was, I mean, five centuries ago. And you can see it is a very massive structure. Now, I thought it was really big, but when I went on the inside, I realized it actually is a pretty small and pretty simple mosque. Now, for somebody who would see the mosque for the first time, they'd be like, wow, what an amazing mosque. But as somebody who's been to Turkey and seen some of the biggest and some of the most beautiful and one of the most ornate mosques in the world, I have to say that's a pretty fair, pretty average mosque. But it is a place where locals still come to this day to pray and remember, this is the reason why we have this mosque here is because the Ottomans took over Sofia. There was the Ottomans who built this mosque. And that's the thing that the Ottomans do. They always like to build a big mosque in the center of the city to show, look, the Ottomans took it over. It happened in Plovdiv, it happened in Pex, and it happened here too in Sofia. So yes, a lot of people here are Eastern Orthodox Christians, but there is still a mosque here and there is still a Muslim population here. It is still being used today. It is still a living mosque and it is incredible the history that is inside. Like I said, very simple, very small, but just a great place to come by when you're here in Sofia.
Now, when we were in Plovdiv, we talked a lot about Philippopolis, the town of Philippopolis, which was the old town, making Plovdiv one of the oldest towns in all of Eastern Europe, and the oldest town actually in all of Europe, and sixth oldest in the world. Now, here in Sofia, they also have a really old town. It's called Serdica, and Serdica was built centuries ago. We are currently on the main road that was the town of Serdica, which is why actually the metro station here is called Serdica. It's named after the really really old town of Sertica that was sort of existed under modern day Sofia and you can see the normal street level is up there but they've excavated to the point where they found all these old old ruins and you can see this is the main street they have a toilet here which is a traditional toilet that was used you know hundreds and hundreds of years ago over there would have been a residential area where somebody would have lived a family would have lived there and they've been able to excavate all of this because this place just has so much history now there's actually an archaeological exhibition inside that tells you more about ancient Sertica and the history of Sertica and how modern day Sofia was built over it this road literally is the road that was used hundreds and hundreds of years ago by Romans or by Greeks um, that were living in this area just like there was in Plovdiv. So yes, we've come to a different city, but the history of Bulgaria, which is full of history from hundreds and hundreds of years ago, hasn't changed at all. And these rocks, these walls here, are a clear demonstration that the history of Sofia goes far, far back, farther than a lot of us have expected. Now, I mentioned earlier that the old town of this area used to be called Serdica, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago in the 5th, 6th century, that's what it was called. So how did it get the name Sofia? Well, this structure right behind me is the Saint Sophia uh, statue. And that's where Sophia gets its name. It's actually a Christian name. It comes from Saint Sophia in the Bible, in Christianity. And there's a statue of her. It's beautiful. It's like golden and black and it's got like the ring and everything. It's just a statue here in the middle of Sophia right next to all the traffic, which I think you can hear. But it is a beautiful little place just to look at where Saint Sophia is just sort of spreading her arms and giving hope to the city of Sofia. Right in the center of Sofia and right behind me is the Sveta Nedelia Church. Now, it is a beautiful church and it's one of the older Orthodox churches. So this is not a Lutheran church, it's not a Catholic church, this is a Russian Orthodox church because again, this is Eastern Europe. But, um, I can't show you anything because they don't actually allow you to take photos or videos on the inside. Here, for some reason, they're really strict about it, so I'm not being able to show you, but use your imagination. It's an Eastern Orthodox Church, that sort of painting and stuff. It's beautiful on the inside. It is truly stunning, but fortunately, you'll just have to use your imagination this time around. Just like all major European cities here in Sofia, there is its own walking street here, and this is Vitosha Street. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, this is a place full of restaurants, cafes, bars, and usually at night, this is also where the clubbing area begins. But it's a completely pedestrian zone, so no cars are allowed to go through. It starts at the church that we were at earlier and ends at you know, a highway on the other end of it. But this is the center of Sofia. This is like the real central area that when people come um, and think about you know visiting Sofia, this is really where it's at. It's a little bit south of the bus station, bus of the uh, south of the railway station. But as you can probably tell, we've got a lot of restaurants, a lot of choices, a lot of options for lunch, dinner, breakfast, whatever it is that you want. Or if it's a coffee in the middle of the day, this is the place where you'd probably come for it. Now, so far in our exploration of Sofia, we've been sort of learning about the ancient history of Sofia. We've been to Sendika, which is the old town, the old street, well, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. We've talked about Ottoman Empire history, the mosque that was built. But we haven't really talked about the communist past in Bulgaria because, believe it or not, when the Iron Curtain fell across Europe, Bulgaria was on the eastern side of it. So they underwent a very, very dark communist period. Now, here in the center of Sofia, there's a place called the Red Flat. And it's a sort of recreation of what life was like in the Soviet times. Not even a recreation of the original things that were there are still there apparently today. And they've sort of kept it the way it was back from the 70s and the 80s. So let's go ahead and see what communist socialist life was like here in Bulgaria. Okay, so that building right there is the Red Flat, but Apparently the red flat's not actually there. That's where you get the tickets for the red flat. It's actually hidden somewhere else. But I've got my little badge here. It says the red flat visitor. And we've even got a ticket for the red flat, which sounds very, very interesting. But it's around the corner apparently. So let's go see when you figure it out and get into and step back into the communist life here in Bulgaria. <laughs> one of the coolest 
museums that I have seen here um, in Eastern Europe. I mean, it is really, really cool. And the thing is, they let you touch everything, they let you open everything, they let you see everything, the old notebooks, the papers, I mean, it's all corroded, but they let you read it, they let you see everything, they let you open the cabinets, they let you touch the clothes, touch the things. It is incredible. It feels like you've really well been welcomed into a, an old home in the 80s in Bulgaria. They talk a lot about the history of tourism in Bulgaria, going to the Black Sea and what that was like. It is honestly an incredible experience and not just understanding the political things that were happening in Bulgaria, but more importantly, how politics affected daily life in Bulgaria. How, what effect did the policies at the very top have on average Bulgarians living in Sofia? Truly an incredible experience and if you get the chance, you've got to visit this place. One of the favorite museums that I have in Eastern Europe and it's just located in a tiny little apartment, literally an apartment that was used for decades under communist rule. Okay, well, there is a symbol of Sofia, and unfortunately we're not gonna be able to see it today because they already closed it down, but it is one of the most important symbols of Sofia, and to be fair, it is just like any other Orthodox church, so I don't feel like I'm missing out too much, but this is the main biggest thing of Bulgaria. It's kind of like the national church. It's like the national symbol. This is the St. Alexander Nevesky Cathedral. This is a cathedral that was built in the Neo-Byzantine era, and apparently, um, there's, it's really, really beautiful on the inside, supposedly, I don't know, because I can't go in and they just closed it down literally like a minute before I was going to get here. The inside, this is a Neo-Byzantine style, it's an Ottoman style sort of um, Orthodox church and like I said, it is the symbol of Sofia, it is probably the most important thing. My suggestion would be, if you're going to come to Sofia, come to this first. Don't go to the mosque, don't go to the main street, don't go to all those things. Come here first because it kind of is out of the way of Sofia, it's kind of out of the way of the main tourist site. It's just like any other Orthodox church, so I don't know. Now, I've also heard there's an underground museum inside the cathedral, so that might be worth checking out. I honestly don't know what there is on the inside. Like I said, they've already closed it down. If you do come to Sofia, go ahead and check it out. It's supposed to be beautiful, it's supposed to be stunning, and like I said, national symbol here in the capital of Bulgaria. <laughs> Now just a couple blocks down from the other cathedral is this building right behind me. This is also a very important building because it inspired the entire cultural revival and the artistic revival here in Bulgaria. This is the National Theatre of Sofia, it is the National Theatre of Bulgaria. And I have to say, compared to other national theatres, it's pretty small. <laughs> It's a really, really small national theater. I mean, compared to the one in Romania, which is like the Athenaeus, which is this massive structure, compared to the one um, in, you know, Budapest and other countries, that is a really, really small national theater. Now, I don't know why Red was chosen, because usually when you think of an opera house, you think of a like, big, beautiful marble structure, but the red brick creates a very unique and different national theater, in my opinion, that really sets it apart. So yes, it might be smaller, but very, very unique national theater here in Sofia, Bulgaria. Now, right across the National Theater, we have come to the final stop of the day, and this is where I'm gonna end the video here, because this is the main city park of Sofia. It's a very important place. Like I said, this is the main park, the main gathering area, and even right now, you can see there are a bunch of young people that are just sort of around here, sort of enjoying the vibe of the city. The one thing that I find is really unique that you're only gonna find here in Bulgaria is that you've got a city park where you can literally move the benches. So what people have done is they've taken a bench from one side and they've moved it so that either they can have a group of four or five or I've even seen somebody literally resting his leg on the other bench. Nowhere in the world are you gonna be able to move benches from a park like you can here in Sofia, Bulgaria. So that is definitely, definitely really interesting. That is all that I have here from Sofia, Bulgaria. It's raining actually right now. So that's why there's not much left to really explore in the city. There's not really much to see. We've seen most of the main sites here. and I I think the city that's closing down, a lot of the things are closed anyways, but really, really interesting day, I think. We've really stepped back into the history of Sofia, starting off with Sedlika, the, the main settlement, the really, really old settlement. And then we sort of switched into the Ottoman history, visiting the mosque, sort of understanding the Ottomans that took over Bulgaria. 
Then we jumped into the communist era, visiting the communist museum, which to me is one of the best museums I've ever seen. But the fact that it's so interactive, that you can go in and touch things and you can open cabinets and open books and see everything, makes it one of the best museums I think I've ever been to in terms of interaction and the opportunity to really get involved in the history. And then finally, of course, with an Eastern Orthodox, Russian Orthodox church here in Bulgaria that really sets it apart. Again, we didn't get to go inside, but still, it is one of the main symbols of Sofia and the shots from the outside are absolutely incredible. I feel like we sort of jumped into the different stages of the history of Sofia and I think that is a great way to sort of understand the history of Bulgaria, the history of the city and just how, how long the city has been around and all the wars and all the history that it's seen. But anyways, that's all I have for you guys today in this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video here in Sofia, Bulgaria. Definitely worth it to come and visit, worth it to come and check out Sofia, Bulgaria. And that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more food and travel videos. There'll be more uh, videos coming here from Eastern Europe, but this is the last travel video here from Bulgaria. I know we haven't spent a lot of time in Bulgaria, but we've got more things to see. We've got more adventures to make. So let's go ahead and head on to the next country. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.